Would you like to accelerate your career and reach your full potential in just minutes a day? Welcome to the Lead X Show with New York Times bestselling author and Inc. 500 entrepreneur, Kevin Cruz. Hey guys, Kevin Cruz here. Welcome to the Lead X Leadership Show, where we help you to stand out and to get ahead at work. Now, as you know, we like to switch things up here, keep it interesting, and to continue that tradition, today on the podcast, instead of me interviewing an expert guest, we're going to have the guest deep dive into their topic. You see, you'll be hearing audio from a LeadX webinar. Now, of course, there are dozens of great webinars on leadership, management, communication, productivity, and more, all archived in the LeadX app. Just visit leadx.org for more information about our webinar archive. So enough on the setup, enough background information. Enjoy. So welcome. This is Brian Mattimore. I'm here to present a program on uh, pioneering uh, a new model of innovation. We call this uh, the total innovation enterprise, our new model. Um, just briefly, some background on myself. I am the co-founder and chief idea guy at Growth Engine. Uh, we've consulted on over 200 successful innovation projects, leading to $3 billion for essentially large companies. I personally have facilitated over 1,000 um, ideation sessions and 500 creative focus groups. And I've written three books on ideation and innovation process. Um, and I was honored to be, am honored to be a marketing and innovation instructor at Caltech. Um, and finally, I'm a, a cum laude graduate of, of Dartmouth. So that's a bit on me. These are some of our clients uh, and brands. And I guess the point of this slide is that it's a pretty wide diversity of clients we work in, which says a lot about our processes, I think, that, that they're, they're not uh, uh, specific to an industry, that they go across industries. So no matter what industry you're in, hopefully what I'm going to share today will be valuable for you. Um, I want to I mention two of my books. Uh, 21 Days to a Big Idea, the one on the right there, is uh, one I wrote in response to a request by Bob Dorf, who is uh, famous in the world of startup, um, lean startups, uh, with Steve Blank. He created the Startup Owner's, Mon Mo um, startup o Owners Manual. He uh, teaches at Columbia Entrepreneurs uh, School there, and he asked me if I could create a, a program that would help um, aspiring entrepreneurs at Columbia Business School to get more and better ideas. That led to this book, 21 Days to a Big Idea, which is really about a program to help people. It, it's sort of a, think of it as almost like a, a, a diet program. You do something every day, and if you do that every day, you'll get a bunch of ideas and from which th there will be a, a big idea. What I, and so that's for entrepreneurs. What I really want to focus on today, though, is, is my previous book. Before that was Idea Stormers. This is a Wiley Josie Bass book, uh, How to Lead and Inspire um, Creative Breakthroughs. And that's really for innovation teams. And so that's the one I want to focus on today. Uh, the new model of innovation I want to talk about is what we call a total innovation enterprise. Uh, we'll get into this, obviously, but the idea here is that innovation is not just for the marketers uh, or even the salespeople. It should be for the entire organization. And so we have eight uh, guiding principles, which I'll go through pretty quickly because I really want to get to some specific examples. My bias is that if I share uh, concrete examples with you guys, you're going you're gonna to grok this thing, you're going to understand this thing and be able to use this thing. Uh, with through those specific examples. But let me start with first principles. So we have eight of them here, eight guiding innovation principles. Um, and I'm going to go through each one pretty quickly, but I, I'll mention them. All facets of a business can be enhanced through innovation. Uh, sounds obvious, I think, but uh, a lot of companies don't, uh, don't follow that. Um, ideas clearly create growth. You need ideas for growth. I guess acquisition would be an idea as well. And it's important to know that it should be thought of as a continuous process. It should not be, you know, one and done. We did our one uh, brainstorming or ideation session for the year and we're done. No, it's really an ongoing process, especially if you talk about innovating ideas. And, and I'll make that distinction between ideation or idea generation, which is coming up with an idea, and the process of bringing that idea to market or innovation or implementing that idea. Uh, the thing that I, I want to say, so I don't forget it, I'll say it now, is that 
all these processes can be used to generate, quote, the first big idea, you know, the eureka moment. Um, but they can also be used and should be used in the process of innovating ideas. <clears throat> an idea. So what, what does that mean? Well, if you're trying to bring a product to market, um, there are all kinds of challenges, hundreds and hundreds of challenges and creative problems that have to be solved to do that successfully. Can you find the money internally or the resources internally to make this thing happen? Did you talk to consumers or customers to refine the idea and develop the idea? If it's a new product, is the positioning right? Is the packaging right? Is the promotion right? Et cetera, et cetera. So these are all uh, it critical in, in bringing an idea to market successfully. And that, uh, the point here is that these ideation techniques can be used both for coming up with a big idea and even more importantly, in some ways, bringing that idea to market successfully, which we define as innovation. Um, ideas drive attitudinal and cultural change. Uh, we have an expression we created that we love, and that's you don't innovate by changing the culture. Um, you change the culture by innovating. So what does that mean? Um, a lot of consulting firms will come in and say, okay, we've got to reinvent your process. Um, not to say that our approach is better, but it is different. We feel um, whatever process you have, fine, we'll work with that. The key is developing successful innovations, and in the process, uh, that can redefine and change your process. So by working on real-world challenges, it uh, doesn't matter what it is, we will discover what processes work for your particular business, your particular culture, and your particular industry. And so our approach is to really start with projects versus a process. And so that's why we say you don't innovate by changing the culture. Yeah, that's our new initiative. You change the culture by actually innovating. Um, innovation approaches can be taught, our third guiding principle here. Um, and that's important because I'm gonna recommend at the end of this uh, webinar podcast here that, um, that you, um, use, uh, you, you use internal facilitators, if you will, train them to be able to facilitate some of these techniques I'm gonna share with you and processes. Uh, innovation takes cra cra courageous leadership. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's all about, you know, not, it's, you, when you innovate, you're gonna fail, and, and probably a lot, and that's expected. Um, and so that, you know, it's not for the faint of heart. Those that are overly controlling, those can, that cannot deal with ambiguity. Um, and so if you're a leader, it's important that you protect these people that are taking that uh, shot at innovating. And of course, communication is critical and honesty and authenticity. When something is not working, to pivot quickly to make it work. And then go with your gut is important too in this work because, um, you know, as, as uh, we had one client who was sitting uh, in focus groups, he, he said it sharpened his gut and it gave him the courage to then go to the board and say, we need the money to go fund this thing. Uh, let's move on to the last four here. Uh, innovation begins and ends with a consumer slash customer. Um, we were big believers in doing a lot of uh, qualitative work uh, before going to quantitative testing if we're talking about new products in the world of packaged goods. Um, and uh, we feel that way because the consumer, you've got to meet an important consumer need and you, it's not wishful thinking. The consumers have to tell, this is, tell you this is something unique that they really want, uh, same with the customer. And so our innovation work, our 19-year-old our innovation agency here in Norwalk, Connecticut, we begin and end with the customer or consumer. Um, as I said before, it does innovation is hard work. It's a numbers game. You've got to experiment and, and, and be comfortable with the ambiguity. Uh, this is a critical point, this next one. Employees at every, every level of an organization have the potential to make creative contributions to the enterprise. And particularly multidisciplinary teams have a unique power to create and innovate. Um, we feel very, very strongly about this. We, we don't recommend our clients create a culture of innovation. We say find and form multi, multi, multidisciplinary teams and have them go do the work. That's the way you succeed uh, with innovation. And when these pockets of passion uh, and the next thing start to happen, the whole organ organization gets energized and wants to be uh, part of that process. Okay, so those are the, the base, basic uh, eight guiding principles of a total innovation enterprise. Again, this, this thing about employees at every level of an organization, this obviously goes beyond new products. It could be efficiency ideas, it could or cost cutting, it could be logistics. Every department, 
every person at every level has the uh, potential to contribute new ideas to help the organization grow and or be more efficient. Um, this is the one I want to focus on today, this first one, all facets of a business can be enhanced through innovation. Um, I, so this is the, the, the key principle that I'm going to focus uh, the, uh, the webinar and podcast on today. Um, and implicit in this is the ability to what? Generate ideas. Um, you're, you're not going to go too far if you can't generate ideas. So how do you do that? How do you do that? Well, that's what I'm going to share with you today. Um, step one, uh, you may have heard, you probably have heard of the term ideation. Uh, it's not brainstorming. Uh, you may know brainstorming was invented in the late 1930s by Alex Osborne, the O of BBDO ad agency. And the two rules of brainstorming are uh, withhold judgment. That's number one. Some people say they interpret that as there are no bad ideas, which is, of course is ridiculous. Most ideas are, are bad or not good. Probably only 10 or 15 percent of the ideas generated in a, a session are, are really uh, worthy of further development. That's the first rule. The second rule, uh, which, which is equally valid, um, is um, quantity will, will equal quality. So the idea is you get a lot of ideas and, that will, and they're, they're bound to be some good ideas there. So that was the basic insight that Alex Osborne had 70 years ago about brainstorming. There's been a lot of research, research done in the 70 years since he quote, invented the technique that um, says that brainstorming really doesn't work. And, it's, it's a fair comment. Um, the shortcoming of brainstorming, if you think about it, and, and I'm sure many in the audience have been in a brainstorming session that didn't go well, because the facilitator might start off by saying, hey, who's got some ideas? And then say, who's got some more ideas? Well, that's okay, but you're not triggering people in any unique way to get new ideas. That is the key to ideation. If there's one thing you take from this webinar today is that you need to move off of brainstorming and go to ideation. And what ideation is all about is triggering the brain with unique techniques and unique stimuli to make uh, creative connections. Okay, and so that's what I'm going to share with you today, how to, how to do that. Um, so we practice at Growth Engine, uh, my company, something we call focused ideation, which if you're saying that's an oxymoronic term, you're absolutely correct. It's, it's, it's a contradictory term, paradoxical, whatever word you want to use. Um, the idea is that we want to resolve an essential paradox. That paradox is that we want to make sure I, ideas generated in, in an ideation session are strategically aligned with what the company is trying to do. So we do have guardrails. We do know where we want to ideate. We do know that, and even if it's quote white space, and especially if it's white space, we have some parameters uh, that we know going in will or won't work. There may be constraints about what can be manufactured, who can you joint venture with, et cetera, et cetera. So we know all that going in and we take that into account when we design our ideation sessions. And so that's why we call it a focused ideation session. The paradox is that you have to recon reconcile um, this strategic targeting, which is somewhat an analytical exercise, with getting new and surprising and unique and wonderful. And so that's the, the creative paradox that we're always trying to reconcile. We want it strategically uh, aligned on target, but we want new and unique. And so those are the techniques I'm going to share with you today on how to do that. Um, this is a sampling of different ideation techniques. Uh, there are dozens and dozens of, of them that are out there. Uh, I've written about them. Uh, there's some great books in addition to mine. Uh, the Idea Stormers book, you know, Thinker Toys is a really good book um, and others. Um, and, and so these, uh, you can see some of these techniques. These are all ones that we use, some of which we have invented. I put at the bottom there, it says, in category relevant stimuli. This is, gets into advanced brainstorming, but the idea is that if you have a unique challenge, and I'll give you a specific example, um, we, were, we were trying to invent um, a new food product, I help our clients invent a new food product. And so one of the, quote, category relevant stimuli, we sometimes will use menu triggers, right, to trigger that. But we made it e even more interesting. Um, you may or may not know that the, the New York uh, Public Library has um, online, 
I think it's 60,000 menus from the history of the country. So you can go back into the 1890s and get the actual menu that the Waldorf Astoria was using for their guests in 1890. So in that case, we use those menus to trigger some, some wonderful new food ideas because sometimes what's old is new. That's a case of using obviously category relevant uh, stimuli to trigger new ideas. Okay, so um, this is the crux of what I want to share with you today. Again, that ide these ideation techniques are not just for new products, right, or advertising, or even social media, generating social media ideas. They can be used for, you know, I, I don't know if infinite is the right word, but a huge, 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 huge uh, variety of challenges that you, you might uh, face in your particular department or job. So these are... 15 or 16 right here, you know, you can, you know, if you're doing vision, mission, values, creation work, um, you want to inform those with ideas. Strategic planning, it's a, it's a, it's a, I feel strongly that strategic planning, an essential component is obviously doing the SWATs and looking at the history and all that kind of stuff. But if you're going to inform a really great strategic plan, right, you want to inform that with new ideas. So we've done a lot of uh, sessions for our clients where we're helping them invent new ideas, new business models, new approaches that can inform the strategic, the three or five year strategic plan that we might be working on. So you can see some of these things. They're obvious ones like new products and advertising, but maybe not so obvious is new sales, sales strategies or loyalty programs. All of these need to be informed by new ideas. Here's another uh, group of them, all of, the, all, of, all of these which we've run. And the challenge here is, uh, okay, so you wanna do a cross-cutting session. What techniques are gonna work particularly well on cross-cutting? Because um, of the 1,500 sessions, uh, ideation sessions that my company has done, we've discovered, not surprisingly, that some techniques work a lot better than others against specific kinds of challenges. So if you're doing cost cutting, uh, you might, um, there is actually uh, having people sort of uh, chart out their, their daily life and where they're being efficient. Sometimes you could use that, do that with a mind map. You would never use that in a new product development session. So I don't think this is surprising, um, but a key part of the, the work and, and, and what I, intellectual property, if you will, that I shared in my book, Idea Stormers, is which techniques to use for different kinds of challenges. Okay, and so now you've seen all these things, and these are 30 different kinds of sessions. I probably could have done 100 of these if I really thought about it. Um, but let me get into specifics now so you can see how you might apply these things. Um, if you look at uh, new business models, right? So we were, uh, we were asked by um, BNY Mellon, and by the way, anything I share today has been kind of cleared by the company. Um, they were working to uh, invent new ways to go to market to service their clients. Um, and so we had 100 people in this two-day session, the top 100 leaders of the, of the organization. The reason we had so many, by the way, is we wanted everybody who was involved uh, in implementing this to be part of the process so they would have ownership. And the chairman also um, showed up and blessed our work. So, so this was their 100 top people. And one of the more powerful exercises we did in terms of inventing a new business model um, was a strategic thought experiment. We call it a joint venture. We used to call it a company takeover, but people freaked out when we called it that. So now it's a joint venture thing where if BNY Mellon joint ventured with Amazon, or Microsoft, or Apple, or Nordstrom, or McDonald's, how would they do business differently? And this was gangbusters. And I will just tell you without revealing some of the go-to-market strategies that even the McDonald's um, business model was one that helped them uh, really arrive at some breakthrough ideas. Um, another one a technique we used when we were trying to do a new business model was the worst idea technique. It sounds pretty stupid and ridiculous, but it's not. Uh, it helps you question assumptions. We were working with a large uh, information services company, and we had, what's the worst idea? They sell information, so the worst idea is give it away. Uh, long story short, we got them to think about could they give away part of the information, and that led to a multi-million dollar division where they were profiling smaller companies. It made their database more robust, and they were able to uh, get those smaller companies to give them free listing, but also paid for listing, to upsell paid for listing. And, it, and so the combination of all that created this 
a multi-million dollar division based on thinking of, quote, the worst idea, just giving away the information without charging for it. So let's, uh, I'm going to, I'm actually going to hit a lot on sales and sales strategies because um, I think it's, it's easy to see the return on investment uh, when you use ideation techniques against these challenges. So uh, this is a fun one. I, I did write about this in Idea Stormers. We were asked by uh, a company called Catholic Knights Insurance, um, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. They've since renamed the Re renamed the company. They had read my, my first book, 99% Inspiration. And they came to me and said, um, how do we sell more life insurance to Catholics? And of course I said, well, you know, can't you sell to the, the Jews and the Muslims and the Buddhists? They said, no, no, by our charter, we only sell to the Catholics. Okay. Um, so we did a bunch of techniques with them, but this was the one that was gangbusters. It's called the problem or opportunity redefinition technique. The way it works is you say, um, you find a subject, verb, and an object in your problem statement or challenge. So how do we, we use the subject, sell is the verb, and object uh, is Catholics. So how do we sell more life insurance to Catholics? So the we, you come up with different alternatives. We is typically the sales force, but maybe it's churchgoers, maybe it's policyholders, maybe it's uh, Catholic family members, etc. Sell, license, give away, advertise, telemarket. To Catholics, is a Catholic a Catholic a Catholic? Well, um, yes and no. You can segment Catholics, lapse Catholics, uh, Catholic summer camps, Catholic, stu Catholic students, Catholic evangelists, etc. the Pope. That's step one. You might put 10 in each column. Then you start combining these some things, sometimes randomly, and you'll, uh, you'll end up with a statement like, you'll end up with a statement like, how do we get friends of Catholics to be incentivized to sell life insurance to Catholic grandparents? Um, and then you use that as a stimulus for coming up with ideas. Um, another one, how do we get the board, Catholic Knight board members, to license the selling of life insurance to Catholic schools? Uh, this, by the way, was, was gangbusters, as I said. They were very rigorous in these combinations. If you have 10 in each column, right, 10 different options in each column, you have a thousand different ways you could redefine this challenge, right? And so this, they came up with many, many ideas. This one, this particular idea was that uh, they, for um, those Catholic schools that had a certain uh, percentage of parents that signed up for Catholic Knights Life Insurance, they would get uh, free gym equipment and computers. And so this one technique led to a 52% increase in sales for them. So that's obviously a traumatic result, right? Um, I'll just take another one. This is an odd one, right? We got a call from a large, uh, one of the big three automobile makers, and they said, can you help us invent a new sales forecasting and logistics system? Well, this is not easy, right? Um, the technique we used was a sort of semantic analysis technique where you take the problem statement and you take each word in that statement um, and, and sort of come up with other options or new ways to think about it. So we've got, uh, we invent a new sales forecasting system. One of those words in that sentence led to the breakthrough idea. Um, so was it system? No. Was it forecasting? No. Was it invent? No. Sales? No. We? No. We're running out of words here, right? No. And new? No. It was actually A. The assumption in that problem statement was that there should be one sales forecasting system. When we questioned that assumption and looked at that, we realized, well, why don't we have manufacturing create theirs, marketing create theirs, manufacture, or, uh, sales create theirs, et cetera, and have them work through these for several months and then begin to compare and contrast how those systems were working and, in the, and, and as a result, over time, get a more dynamic accurate and useful sales forecasting system. Okay, uh, and finally, I think this is the last example. Yes, I wanna share, um, because it's, it, was, it was so, uh, let me go back here, it was so uh, profound. We, um, how many of us have been at a national sales meeting and besides golf, right? <laughs> most of the time is spent uh, sort of sharing, obviously, goals for the year and performance from the last year. And so uh, with one company I can mention, and it was Pfizer, their financial services company, eight divisions at this meeting. We had about 150 people there. 
the idea was, are there cross-selling opportunities? They sold to the, the largest banks in the nation. Are there cross-selling be opportunities between divisions? So we built a day-long um, bunch of exercises to, to try to identify those ideas and then exploit them. At the end of the day, um, and we use trigger brainwalking, it's like idea volleyball, all these different techniques, and it was hugely successful, uh, even with 150 people, right? Um, at the end of the day, we asked, he said, well, what, how would you value, what's the value of these ideas? And people said, and the, the guys in the room and, and, and women in the room, obviously, um, we value them at $150 million of new opportunity. And, and we pushed them and said, you know, the president may, <laughs> may make you uh, deliver on these. Do you really want to say $150 million? And they said, no, they do. Um, and so we checked back a year later and they had realized 72 million of that. So that, boy, talk about an ROI uh, for a sales meeting. Uh, that's pretty darn good. So I'm, I'm basically done here. I, the, but the point I want to make is that, that everybody in an organization can contribute in all departments and in all ways. Uh, I'd say here your company's greatest asset is the creativity of your people. It's often a wasted or underexploited asset. Uh, brainstorming doesn't work. I'm just reviewing what we talked about. Ideation and the stimuli it brings does. And then finally, the most important, uh, a really important point here is that uh, don't, if you will, think of uh, idea generation too narrowly, primarily for new products or advertising. But what about for strategy or sales or talent attraction? It could be for anything. I mean, I did a session uh, last month for a company was how do we attract and retain talent because with the low unemployment rate that that's become a huge huge issue so i i i would encourage you to find um to assign somebody in your organization maybe it's you uh, but uh somebody who is trained in these processes we've done some of that some of our clients has asked them to train asked us to train them in these ideation methodologies and we're happy to do that those internal facilitators can then uh, run sessions internally um, in all departments and and that's actually fun for us to do we enjoy sort of training these companies to do that um, and so uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm basically done here. Again, these were the, the two books. Innovation Teams is the one that, um, if you're interested in all that I've been sharing today, would be the one that would have all the specifics of what I just shared, helping uh, create the, quote, total innovation enterprise. The 21 Days to a Big Idea is really more for uh, current and aspiring entrepreneurs, a process to help them develop that big idea. Um, if you're interested in uh, some of the resources um, I'm happy to email you uh, the, the, some resources. These are some articles I've written. Um, I did give a TED talk last year on creative techniques to solve impossible challenges. And so I'm happy to send you um, all these links if you want. My contact information, um, my email is bmattimore at growth-engine.com. And my telephone number is 203-857-4494. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this. I hope I didn't go too fast. I hope you got something of value. And um, I want to thank Leadex for having me do this uh, webinar. And we'll see you later. Friends, if you like this episode of the Leadex Leadership Podcast, please take a minute, leave a rating on iTunes or Stitcher. Ratings are invaluable for attracting new listeners. And I like to convert those listeners into leaders because you know I'm on a mission to spark 100 million leaders in the next 10 years. And if you want to become the boss everyone fights to work for and nobody wants to leave, check out the LeadX platform with Coach Amanda at LeadX.org. And if you have 10 or more managers who could use some binge-worthy training, send me an email at info at LeadX.org, L-E-A-D-X dot O-R-G, and we'll talk about getting you set up with a totally free pilot for those managers. See if they like it. If they don't, that's fine. We go away. Part as friends. But if they love it, you've just found yourself a new resource for them. Remember, leadership is influence. You're always leading. How are you going to lead today?